What is going on, everybody? Happy Friday. We made it through another week. Uh, I didn't have a great night at N- NBA, so I'm going to let Sheets take it away, who uh, dominated the NBA. He won an NBA tournament. He did the NBA and the uh, NHL wins last night. Sheets, great job. And uh, tell us a little bit about your night. Yeah, so uh, I played uh, the, the normal guys. I mean, I'm, uh, now I was in the in the Discord basically running running all my builds um, and showing people what I was doing, both uh, both in hockey and in basketball or whatever. And there was, you know, I, I liked all kind of like the chalkiest type plays, but then there were other guys that kind of just kind of filtered in there. And I just kind of gave up on the slate a little bit. There was, you know, we were doing our call at, at um, you know, we had a call at eight o'clock and, and then nobody really seemed to be doing all that much for me. I mean, honestly, and, uh, I didn't really have, uh, I don't, I had some Jokic, but I didn't think it was going to matter. And then I had a couple of with, with, with Booker and the game didn't really, didn't get going. And I just didn't kind of think about it. And then as we were just getting towards the end of our call, I'm like, Whoa, you know, I'm actually going to, I think I might win this uh, single entry. And I pulled the I pulled the signal entry thing up, and I want to show it to you because because I didn't win it. And one of, uh, there's a couple of points I want to make about it. And Ro- Rody hit it right on the head. Um, let me let me share my screen. Yeah, you can do. It. And so uh, first, let me, let's put the, let's put the lineup up first. Um, uh, this is the the lineup where that it won. And first thing to notice is that uh, it won by a full 11 points <laughs> with, with all these guys just kind of like struggling along to like kind of chase me. The other thing to notice is that there are there were one of the eight plays in this. Five of them were stone chalk. Okay? Right. OK. Um, two of them were, were one of them. Vooch was kind of like owned. Right. Right. And. Kyle Anderson was just kind of there. I mean, he was owned and just had one kind of low owned play, right? Um, and ended up smashing as a result of the low owned play, winning by 11 points. Um, couple couple of things to note. First of all, when we go back to our video, and I, I, I was a little late coming in today, so I didn't have a chance to fire it up. I really wanted to, was um, when we were going over the slate yesterday in our early look, we got to the um, the Phoenix game. Um, actually, it wasn't an early look. But what happened was, is that in the early look, I said, you know, uh, Chris Paul actually looks is questionable for the first time. Not even the eye. And he might actually be playing, so it's something to keep an eye on. Okay, that was at noon. Then when we did the live stream and Booker was in, we were going over this, and I said, and we, we could put this up there, it's like, well, Chris Paul's playing. We can't play Booker anymore, right? And you said, no, nah, dude, that's what you're supposed to do in like a tournament. I'm like, uh, okay. like and then we went on to other stuff. Doing it. <laughs> and then we went on to other shit. You know, we went on to other stuff. And so I included him in whatever. And it's just like the ultimate freaking like troll game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we've been playing him as a great play every single day that Chris Paul's been out. And he's been, you know, very healthily owned, but he's always been lower owned than he should have been. Like he was always like 18, 19% when, in our opinion, he should have been 30 plus. Um, and he ended up not doing much. And and not to mention the night before, he had literally eight fantasy points in the first half. And we talked about him in the stream that, you know, he was he was good enough to like get to five X, whatever. And with Chris Paul back, he just decided to go off for 50 real life points for 78 fantasy points. So a couple couple of things to note. Number one, and, and Bobby says it talks about this all the time, that that you don't need much. Uh, to win some of the tournaments okay mm-hmm. and it does depend on what you, what tournament that you're in like if you're in like a single entry tournament like this you really just need one okay i had like one and a half and and mm-hmm. the, the one and a half didn't really do anything you know what i mean like kenny really anderson didn't even do it you just need one low owned play to go off to, to to make it work in single entry like i'll give you an example let's go back to and that's funny, as I was sweating this, I'm like, you know, I got to make sure that I'm not in, I'm not in contention to win the hundred thousand. Right. Cause mm-hmm. uh, you know, his booker really started to go nuts. I'm like, Whoa, am I supposed to be a, uh, my life for more? But, but even Rody pointed out like this tournament came, this, this lineup was 91st in the yeah. fadeaway. You know, this had no chance of the fadeaway because in the fadeaway, you can't get away with that. I mean, you got to do much better than just have the one 
low owned guy. You know, you got to do you got to do more than that. And it's um, funny, it's odd that in the in the higher buy-in, the the sharper people are mostly off of Booker. But if you a lot of people left him into the fadeaway thing, which is sadly what I did too as well. Isn't that kind of funny? The ownership <laughs> that is pretty fun. Yeah. Um, the the other thing I wanted to point out, and and you know, listen, we 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 did just to, not to cross market the wrong the other sports, but we did a really really in depth in intro, intro baseball video um yesterday. And one of the things that we talk about in baseball, one of the things we talk about in basketball a lot is that that two different types of players can have the same median and just have are just totally different for gpps versus cash or whatever and i was i always liked guys like booker when and we could go to other examples of it like guys like lillard um what's his name zach levine uh mitchell like guys that are in this range that from time to time just go off you know what I mean? Because they just they're shooters and and they're shooters are penetrators. When shooters get hot, you know, then they get the ball more. And then they, it's not like Booker's not going to just stand in the corner. Right. When he's hot, he's just going to go up. And look, I know this was like 100 years ago, but the guy did freaking score 75 real life points. Right. Against against the Celtics. Like he's the type of guy and there are types of guys that have these ceilings in them. And these are the guys that. Just you should, and I know Bobby likes to say, well, if you're going to play him now, you got to play him every night. But like we used to do this with Zach Levine, like we would play him literally every night. You know what I mean? We would right. play him like every night to make sure to get 10% because guys like this just go off from time to time. And listen, I know what I know what you guys are saying. Well, you're only pointing it out now because he happened over the ceiling. Yeah, well, you know what? Good. Now at least I have your attention. Oh, because that's not his ceiling. His ceiling is like 80. Well, but my point is, but, but, okay. But it's so, so would you yeah. be listening to me by pointing it out if you scored 50? Probably not. Right. So, so right. I'm taking this opportunity <laughs> to, to, to let you guys, there are just guys that, that at, at this price, regardless of what, of the situation can, can, can break slates because, because sometimes they'll project not that great, but they always have that ceiling in them. So um, that, for, that, for that's, word, he's done it twice this year with Chris Paul after Chris Paul came back in game. So it's kind of funny that it's like, seems to be a thing sheets. Um, anyway, pretty incredible. Uh, yeah. really right now, NHL, cool. got the, the NHL wins and the NHL, I got third and fourth in the same GPP. And the, that's um, awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I give it to give you, to give you an example of the, of, of the, uh, of the difference between, uh, the difference between sports, um, and like low ownership and stuff. So, so let me, let me pull up like what, what a, like a hockey GPP lineup looks like. As opposed to like an NBA GPP line, let me get down to it. All kinds so, of confusion. So, yeah. So, th so, th so this is what a hockey lineup looks like with ownership. I mean, this is this is what they, I mean, they all look kind like. of a brutal payout structure. <laughs> it's not like it's not like the million. It's not like the million for golf. It, it goes a million, a hundred thousand, fifty thousand. Yeah, dude, first 000. was twenty thousand. <laughs> yeah, and then then third place gets twenty five hundred. That's a dude. Second was five thousand only. I wow, mean, wow. It's tough. It's oh tough. man. Well, you're gonna. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so that was definitely that was that, so that was definitely fun. Um, and um, hey, if if every night one of us is has something to talk about, then some then we're then we're doing it right as a team. So that's that's good news. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely, man. I'm happy to hear it. Uh, always happy for you to get a win, for any of our team to get a win. And uh, with that said, we got a nice little Friday slate. It's not yep. not as overwhelming as some 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 full uh, some Friday slates have been in the past. We've only got what seven games on a Friday. Thank you, NCAA tournament, for making our job a little less stressful today. So, um, all right, let's get into it. With uh, any any sort of overall thoughts on the slate before we jump into it? Yeah, there's a couple of um, of really uh, cheap prices on FanDuel relative to DraftKings. And I keep forgetting to, to, to bring it up because I haven't really been playing FanDuel recently, just for no reason. Yep. Um, but they're, they're, that's the one thing I wanted, I wanted to bring up is there are a couple and, and hopefully you'll remember to, to talk about it when we get there. Um, but um, just seems like, again, the slate where it doesn't look like that much great value, but there just will be. <laughs> that's yep. what yep, it's uh, there definitely is going to be. <laughs> That's all I can promise you. Um, this is going to be the time of the, of the year, guys. What I would say about it is just remember the NBA standings. Remember the teams that have nothing to play for. Remember the teams that have something to play for, yada, yada, yada. I know I, I harp on this a lot, but it really is important. I know it didn't work out in the form of Darius Garland last night, but once Kevin Love was announced starting, um, 
we kind of have to play Kevin Love. I was off the air at the time. I did put it in the Discord, so I hope you guys caught that one. Ooh. But it's like you kind of you, you kind of had no like in my opinion, he hit the absolute floor for what he could have done in that game, and he put up thirty six fantasy points and at fifty two hundred on Fanduel, fifty nine hundred on DK. Um, anyway, so th- th- everybody's playing playing for real to try and not be in this uh, playing game, especially having to face the Mets in in, in one of those games. So. Uh, all right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the 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 Utah Charlotte game. I'm a little surprised by the total in this game. Um, I, I got the total. I'm sorry. The uh, the spread. I would have thought Utah would have been a bigger favorite here. Um, I, I don't know if there's anything to really watch out for. It doesn't seem like. Well, I mean, I mean, this is not wouldn't be it. But I mean, but Bojan is Bo, Bojanovic yeah. is out. I mean, that's something. I guess. I yeah, and Utah has been not so great, but they've been playing like the best teams in the NBA. And Charlotte is not one of those teams. Charlotte's been playing better. I guess there's some there to it. Charlotte's at all. This feels like a good spot to attack. You know what I mean? Sheets, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think that uh, a couple of things. Um, before I forget, uh, Terry Rozier on FanDuel was 6,500. Uh, that's 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 pretty cheap. I think. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. But before, before, and I'm showing 25% ownership at noon. So that, that could be anything. But yep. um, the, the so again, well, I can't believe I remember to talk about FanDuel. So with respect to DraftKings, um, I think that 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 Mitchell and and, and Gobert are both great plays. Um, uh, game rates to stay somewhat close, uh, even though Charlotte has been trending um, to actually slower pace. I think than they had been for the rest of the part of the season. They're still a high paced team in general, um, and that obviously helps the the. The Gobert and Mitchell, I don't think either of them are going to be particularly low owned, but they both project really well. Um, and I think they're really good plays. And with respect to playing anybody from, Char- from Charlotte, I think they're all, at DraftKings at least, you know, pretty fairly priced. So I don't really see too much on the Charlotte side of things. So for me, I'll probably, you know, it depends on, you know, how the lineup's built, but I, I think both those guys, uh, Mitchell and Gobert, are really good plays. Yeah, just I do want to know that Lamelo finally had that you know I don't want to say ceiling game because he can go higher than that, but it's his first fifty fantasy point, second fantasy for 50, 50 fantasy point game in the last fifty or whatever twenty games that it's been twenty five games, um, and he it took him shooting lights out to do it. And if guys make you know if they take fourteen threes and make six of them, they're usually going to get there. Um, you would hope. And and this is not a matchup where I'm particularly interested. I do like the idea of Rozier on Fanduel a little bit. And I think if there was one guy to play on Charlotte, it would be Miles Bridges. The only guy I would add, I, I have Gobert as a priority. I have Mitchell or Conley. Uh, I think you can really sort of choose between them. Um, but I don't really have a lot of interest on the, on the run back. I think early on in the day, we're going to see uh, Royce O'Neal as a value play, but it's probably not going to be viable by the end of the day just because we know who Royce O'Neal is. He's a really good real-life basketball He's a good defender, good real-life basketball player who is going to put up, you know, somewhere between 12 and occasionally he'll put up the 30 fantasy point game, but uh, he plays the same minutes. There's no special reason except for this game environment is decent for him. But uh, right now it's just Mitchell and Gobert, M- Mitchell, I'm sorry, Gobert, then Mitchell or, Cl- or Conley in that order for me. Um, Washington, Detroit. Uh, that was a, you know, an ugly performance um, from Washington last night. And what are they going to do with Chris Stops on a back-to-back is a real question. Uh, I don't know, Sheets. I, I'm struggling with this one. Let me know your thoughts on this game. He played back to back last week. Yeah. Um, against the Knicks and 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 the uh, against the Knicks and the Lakers on travel. All right, which was uh, uh, could have been because it's the Knicks and the you know Lakers, but uh, nonetheless, I mean, they, they, they got reasonable amount of minutes. I I I, I would exp- I. I don't want to say I would expect him to play. It doesn't matter what I, what I expect. You know what I mean? I, th- I think if he plays, he's going to play. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, if, and if I think that if he sits, he's going to sit. I, I don't think he's going to be playing with any restrictions at this point. I think he's on his 30, he play 32 minutes now. I don't think there's any way he plays 32 is my per- personal take. Oh, okay. Even the last time they, 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 they held him to a stiff limit of uh, 26. Well, but they held him to the limit that he was on anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I yeah, think he's up. I, th- I think they've released. You know what I mean? Like I think that this is that's already like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. yeah. We can we we can go back and forth on this one. I, I don't know. I have a different take. I don't understand what they're doing by playing him. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's actually very illogical. But 
Washington does everything the wrong way. So why should I expect anything different? But I would say, I, I would bet you there's some news on this Washington team by the time that lock hits. Sorry. Anyway, she, sorry, keep going. I don't need to project that. It's the no, first that's time. fine. Um, so, so the fact is, is that, that, that he's really the only guy that, uh, that I have interest in in Washington. Like I, like the Raul Nate Netu again, like he's just going to look like a play and then he's just not going to look like a play. <laughs> um, on, on the Detroit side, I have, um, it's, it, I have a similar uh, opinion on playing uh, Killian Hayes. Uh, I feel as though right now he looks like a pretty good play. I don't know if you know, he's going to – doesn't look like a great play. It looks like an okay play, in which he, it might end up being uh, like a non-play a little bit later. Yeah. And Cunningham, you know, he looks like kind of a fringe play as well, you know. So uh, this whole game is very uh, – it, it's not too inspiring. I actually do like the Killian Hayes play. Um, I think that there is some legitimacy to what they're doing. I mean, first of all, their other guys are out. So finally they're kind of doing the right thing or they have been out. What's worrisome about the Killian Hayes thing is that we haven't, we've had of course, Corey Joseph for only one of those games, but maybe it's just time Detroit is like letting their young guys go a little bit. And it does seem like it's trending more that way. So I, I do like, uh, Hayes. I don't mind, uh, by the way, I know the price is like, I don't want to say sticker. I guess a little sticker shock, but we know Kate has a ceiling at this, and, and I think he's actually going to have ownership. Otherwise, I would be talking him up even more. Um, everybody rates to me sort of fine, except for Killian Hayes as a somewhat of a priority. I do think we're going to hear news on Washington. So I've got Washington with a big question mark, and I've got Hayes as a guy who I definitely want some exposure to. That's pretty much it for this game for me. But I, I do think Washington is going to do something. I would just bet you anything that that, that happens. Um, where are we at with Golden State and Atlanta in the uh, – I mean, the Golden State thing is, I think we kind of like, you know, we got to have a Jordan Poole conversation here. Um, the guy uh, the guy is just going to be, his usage is going to be through the roof. He's going to take a million shots. Uh, even with Draymond and, and Clay there, I actually think that he's still a really solid play. He's just consistently been good. Um, but other than that, I'm not really interested on the Golden State side. And uh, we can always play the Atlanta guys, but there's nothing special about this for, for me. So what, what, are, what are you looking at in this game? Yeah, so first with Atlanta, just the same speech always. I mean, just being Trey Young at your own risk nowadays. Um, he certainly could put up his, you know, put up a lot of fantasy points. Uh, now, again, tonight there are a couple of guys who, um, well, I mean, particularly, well, maybe not that many guys. You could put up uh, the maybe just one or two that could put up the points that he could put up. So uh, I, I, I continue to believe he's in play every day uh, under 11K until further notice. Um, and on the Golden State side, I, I'm, the, the Jordan Poole thing is interesting. So the other day when he was 7,200 or something, it, he, I, he didn't project all that great for me. And a lot of people liked him. I think he did really well. Um, I, I, I just, I'm just not used to him being – yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not used to him being priced up here. So that's why each time I look at him, I kind of blink. But, like, but, but why shouldn't he be, like you're saying? You know, like he has all kinds of usage. He's whatever. Like, wait, wait, wait. Who's to say that Darius Garland shouldn't be 9,700? You know, they're just different players than they were in, in other situations. So you can't, get, you know, you can't worry about what the price looks like to you. Right. Um, so, so Jordan Poole is good, but I will also point out that uh, that Draymond Green is 5,200 on FanDuel, um, and uh, uh, has to look like a good player over there at 5,200. Um, that yep. would be that would be it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of so Draymond and Clay are both really cheap on FanDuel. Clay's sixty six hundred, so it's not like you need to play Clay. But I do think he's I think he's in play on FanDuel. I think he's like a guy I'm considering. But I, you know, the Warriors, you know, are sort of in a weird spot. They kind of are, you know, they're two and a half games back of the two seed. They're three games up on the three the four seed. Don't really know that they're going to go out there and like go crazy with anything except for letting Jordan Poole kind of run. And that's just my my initial take of what they're going to do. And that's it. Uh, I, 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 I have some interest. I have interest in pool. Um, I don't think that any of these guys in this game are priorities for me on DraftKings, but I do think that Draymond will be a priority on FanDuel. And I think Trey will be a priority on FanDuel or at least one of my guys on FanDuel. Don't really like anybody on, on DK. If there's a guy to play, you know, we keep talking about Trey Young as if he's doing it. The guy who's shown the, the, the ceiling versus price is Bogdanovich. Like, sure. you know, yeah. I think that's, that's, that could be something you, you do here. Um, just because of the ceiling. But again, it's not like these are the most exciting plays in the world. Those are just guys who, who we, you know, we could play. We don't have the, the excuse to play them where this guy's out. So this might happen or this or that. 
we just have, okay, we've got, we've got some good, you know, some guys who have ceilings and that's pretty much how I feel about this whole game. So not, and so far, not, not overly interested in anything on the slate, except for a little bit of the uh, Utah stuff. Um, New York and Miami, uh, your Knicks are basically done. Do they, are they, do they throw in the towel sheets? What, what, what's the, what's the deal? Do, do they, are they going to stop playing their guy? Probably not. Right. They're probably going to keep playing them a million minutes. I think so. Okay. That's what I would um, So tonight, but tonight again, it's, it's watching the, you know, it's watching the injury report, you know, uh, making sure, I mean, seeing if Randall plays, seeing if, if, if Mitch Robinson plays, you know, um, and we just have to watch that. Like, as of now you have says he'll be a game time, you know, Randall be a game time decision. And then Mitch Robinson was to say about him, he will be a game time decision. So if, 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 if both of them are out, for example, um, then, then we can go Jericho Sims and Obi Toppin, you know, <laughs> if both those guys happen to be out, if one, you know, if one of them is out, it depends who it is. If Randall's out and Obi Toppin is starting again, I know they've moved him up in price, but who cares? I'd probably play him again. Um, and if Mitch Rob is out and let's say Mitch Rob is out and Randall is in, then I actually like Randall. I've, I've, I had like some, some luck doing this. I like just trying to like, grab some more rebounds when Mitch Rob is out um, to play Randall. So mm -hmm. I'd probably, I'd probably do that. And then I'd have to decide on whether Mitch Rob being out is enough to play Jericho Sims if Randall is in. So these are just, these are just questions that honestly the projections will kind of help me with once the, once the news comes out, but unfortunately it's kind of a weird game time, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's at eight o'clock. Yep. Well, well after the seven o'clock games get started and, and after the seven thirties, probably if they're saying a game time decision. I mean, that's, we're legitimately waiting past three full games. I mean, three games of lock before you get probably some pretty relevant news, you know, like you, you want to play those guys. I think if you get, if, you know, if it breaks exactly the way, you know what I mean? I, I suggested, like if you get both Mitch Rob and Randall out, I mean, you're just going to have to play like, Oh, for open, also Barrett, you know, and all these other guys in the mix. So you just, you just don't know. Um, and, and with respect to Miami, I like to talk a little, a little more about it. Cause you know, we like talking about uh, Jimmy Butler, the types of games he gets up for and types of games he doesn't get up for. I want to throw in not, you know, we've been playing the Knicks, not that the Knicks are anything great, but it's still the Knicks. And, and I don't know if you make anything of, uh, of, of, uh, of the, of the bench nonsense from the other day with Udonis Haslam, uh, with, yep. with, with Butler getting, I don't want to say shown up, but Butler certainly being in the news um, for his bench uh, behavior in that game. So I wonder if he, that'd be the situation where he'd want to come out and play hard. I don't, I don't know. So, so what do you think of Butler? What do you think of all these Knicks? What do you think in general? Um, I, I think this game is just the classic. We have no idea who's playing. So right. um, the only thing is, so let me just point out what's happening in the Eastern Conference. If those of you not following, this is a absolute, it's crazy. The Nets are going to be in the play-in game no matter what. They're three games back of multiple teams to try and get out of it. And those the teams, Knicks? You mean the Knicks? No, I mean the Nets. The Nets. Um, but then, so that's the bottom of the East. But the reason why it's relevant is because there is some thought about teams avoiding the Nets. Mm -hmm. And from what we've seen about, like, the Bucks resting people, the Sixers resting Harden and Embiid, you know, and it seems like people are trying to play themselves out of that 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 one and two seed because that, that's where the Hawks the Nets will end up playing their that's first. That's interesting. Game. The problem is that you have four teams within a game and a half at the top of the East, including the Heat, who are leading the East. Who obviously home field advantage, home court advantage would be a, a major thing. But would they? So would they really sit anybody when you're playing for home court advantage and you've got a one game lead and you've been playing terrible? It feels like a game where Miami goes all out, and I don't know what the Knicks do because Tibbs's style is to, to let every, whatever whoever plays is going to play a bunch of minutes. But if, if we have Julius Randle or Robinson out again, we go right back to our other guys. If we have both of them out, we go right back to our other guys. And uh, that's pretty much how this, this is going to work. And, and honestly, maybe it's good that I don't like the early games that much because that not knowing that information, if we don't, which my guess is we will, but if we don't, man, you're going to be missing out on some serious value. Um, this time it's going to be Jericho Sims who's going to be the point per dollar darling. But yeah. uh, but Obi Toppin is is a still a great play at forty five hundred if these guys are both out obviously and then you get R J Barrett in quickly and Fournier and Burks and some sort of mix of that because they don't have a whole lot of other guys left right. they're going to play so um, also this is obviously a little bit of a rivalry game for them and I think it would mean a lot for them to try and knock the knock off the uh, 
you know, it's just, they're playing just for pride at this moment. So you look for anything you can, but it's a weird, it's a definitely a weird game with a ton of Q tags. Um, the next game is another one that has some, I mean, and, and we're getting down to it. When you're less than 10 games, you're really getting down to, to the final part of it. The, the, the Mavs are in a pretty decent spot to end up either fourth or fifth, probably. That's, that's almost very likely where they're going to end up playoff wise, but if they slip a little bit. They end up as the seven seed. The Timberwolves are back one game of the seven of the seven and um, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. The Timberwolves are one game back of the six seed, which would keep them out of the play in games. So obviously that's a meaningful thing. This is going to be a, a spot where they're going to go all out. I don't expect cat to sit. I'd be very surprised if anybody sits in this game. Um, so we have our, 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 our normal guys. Um, what, what are you, what are you doing with these guys? I think that everybody's going to play for what it's worth. Well, I think that Luca is, 10,400 on fan move. Yep. Um, that's for openers. Uh, so I figured I'd make sure to bring that up before I go back into draft teams. Yep. Um, uh, I, I, I think that people play, I mean, again, but what do I know? <laughs> again, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, tough games, uh, game time there. Uh, I, I think that that cat, like you mentioned that cat got kind of eaten up in his last game. Um, by uh, I forget who it was was Aiden or somebody like that I forget who it was um, yeah Aiden uh, so he might be uh, interested in coming back uh, with, with a good game and like you say every every time Minnesota plays like you know they'll all somebody somebody's somebody's viable <laughs> Some, someone's great to have a good game between Russell and Edwards and and Cat um, so yeah sounds good to me play like Luca and then one of the Minnesota guys certainly, certainly makes sense. Is there any value over here? I don't Beverly. Yeah. I'm going to get to that. Yeah. On Dallas, not really. And on Minnesota. Yeah. Beverly is this, I guess Beverly is probably one of the strongest values right, right now, at least on the board. So yeah. So Beverly for Minnesota, maybe Beverly with cat, maybe just Beverly, maybe Beverly and Luca. I mean, it certainly seems to make sense. Yeah, it's a, you know, I, I just speak just in the name of that we like to take the opposing guys aside from Cat. I don't have a problem if you want to take a shot on Dwight Powell, who's not going to project well or be owned, but has shown a ceiling, has a little more size than Kleber, maybe makes a little more sense of a matchup than Kleber with Cat, maybe gets extra minutes because of it. Um, but we've seen it, we've seen a ceiling out of him recently. So I'm, you know, a couple of times. So I'm open to the idea of Powell, but mostly it's going to be the the main guys. And, and by the way, I'm open to the idea of Kleber too. Just, while we don't have value, I, I probably am going to change my mind once we get normal value. But as of right now, they're they're on my list. Um, it's it's Cat. It, it, my favorites in order are Beverly, Cat, then Luca on DK, and on Fanduel it's Luca, Beverly, Cat. Well, I mean, there's another one. By the way, I mean, Cat's questionable at, a, at, a, at an 8 p.m. game. I mean, like um, I said, though, but I mean, like he's hurt for sure. No question in my mind that he's hurt, um, but he's going to play like I, I would bet. I mean, OK, my guess is if, if, if I just he this has been the case every game lately and he always plays um, and I just don't see him sitting when they need to get themselves out of the seven seed in a really important game. Probably the rest of the way, to be honest with you, they didn't play yesterday. So uh, I'm going to assume everybody plays. But again, you're right, though, if, if something does happen and we don't hear about it sooner and we've seen we've certainly been surprised before. Um, the other guy, though, who I would play, I, I think I would lean Edwards over Russell here, but you could make an argument for the other way. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really in love with any of it, to be honest with you. Uh, Dallas plays like, good defense. I mean, Dallas plays good defense. They play slow. Um, they just played this game. We just saw this literally this exact same game the other day. Um and they, it was an important one then, and it was we, we got basically no production out of anybody. So <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Um, let me just double-check what Powell did in that game. Actually, Powell put up 41 fantasy points. So there may be some merit to playing a little bit of Powell. And, it, you know, he was incredibly efficient, but that's how he always is because he just shoots from two feet away. Um, but eight rebounds, 22 points, a couple steals a block. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about this game. It's pretty interesting. This is a, you know, a Friday slate. I don't remember liking so little. But I'm sure by the uh, by the time the slate actually kicks off, we'll we'll like a lot of other things because there's definitely going to be some some different some different lineups out there than what we're, we're expecting right now, in my in my opinion. 
What do you think for the ten o'clock games? And starting off with the uh, Houston. Yeah, what a what a what a what a crap game, right? Houston against Portland. Um, Maybe incredibly good for DFS though. Yeah. So so we got. I uh, start with Portland, I guess. Uh, Chris Dunn, forty five hundred rates right now to be the top play on the slate uh, from a points per dollars perspective. You got Ben Mattlemore can only shoot himself into a game uh, at thirty seven hundred. You got Keon Johnson, thirty five hundred. If you want to dart throw that thing. Uh, uh, I can't, don't think I could do Brandon Williams at 6,700. Uh, other guys are, I mean, not really showing up in Watford, 6,800. You, maybe Eubanks, 6,300. I don't know. Houston, I have to say that, um, what's his name? Kevin Porter Jr. looks like a really good play. Yeah. Um, uh, on DraftKings at 6K. Uh, I like that. Chris Wood, Christian Wood looks pretty, pretty good. Jalen Green, uh, who I don't think I played. Uh, in a while, at least a while, uh, he looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so these Houston guys, uh, Houston Portland, like you said, it's a, it's a the battle of the tankers or whatever it is. But uh, from DFS, from a DFS perspective, maybe uh, this could be as as DFS champ, I say, kind of like a clown fiesta, where like nobody plays any defense, nobody cares about the game, yep. everybody just goes off. Yeah, it's really weird that I I like this like as an actual game stack, um, and I don't quite know how I want to do it. I think that the Ben McLemore at ownership is always a cre- incredibly suspect. Yeah. Um, but like you said, he can shoot himself into a game. So if it's below twenty percent by the time the slates are going off, I think that's okay. Um, I have no problem with McLemore um, on the Portland side. I, I like Chris Dunn fine. I don't like love or hate. I, I think he's a fine. I think he's fine. Um, I feel like everybody's fine though. Keon Johnson, we're speculating, we're speculating on a bunch of guys' minutes, but somebody's going to get these minutes. It's probably not going to divide totally evenly, although it might because of the way Portland's sort of tanking. So it's really hard to know who I want to play. Yet I kind of want to stack the game. It's much easier for me on the Houston side. I like Porter and I like uh, Christian Wood a lot. I like Deshaun Tate, and I want some exposure to Jalen Green, especially where I'm not playing Porter. I even think you could make a I mean, it's a tank fest, so are they really going to play? They're starting to cut back on Gordon's minutes at 3,400. It's just kind of weird to see him at 3,400. Um, they're cutting back on uh, Schroeder's minutes. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do with this game yet. I'll have much more information at uh, 545 Eastern, but I, I really don't know what I want to do. The, my, my favorite weird play, or as you would say, the hoodoo play, is maybe to take a shot with Sengun. Um I just don't think anybody's going to play him. And he has a, I mean, he put up 36 fantasy points in 20 minutes the other night. He can do that and he can do, he can, he can get more minutes and they kind of play double big. So you might see like a weird, surprising Shangun, maybe not even starting, but like maybe he gets, instead of the 20 minutes he's projected, maybe he gets 26. I think that's possible. Um, why aren't they just letting this guy, I don't understand the way these teams run their, like whatever. I understand you're tanking, but let your like young guys play. That's, that's the way you're supposed to tank. Um, and, and I just am really up in the air with Portland with no justice Winslow, what to do here. Uh, well, you obviously have to wait and see what happens to Josh Hart. I mean, Josh Hart's out though, right? I have him as out. Oh, really? I just haven't questioned. Him. I can't imagine they would, like, I didn't understand why they were playing him before. I certainly don't think yeah, I don't have him projected as, as for points, but I just see yeah. a question going to draft teams. Like. Yeah. I guess it's always possible that he comes and plays a game for some reason or another. Um, <laughs> But I just am guessing that he's out, and, and that's gonna. I guess that's. I guess that's Keon Johnson, Macklemore, Chris Dunn, uh, maybe Eubanks. I, I don't know. It just. It, I like the game stack, but I can't even figure out who I'm playing yet in it. It's just a really weird slate, and this is what you get with first looks. It's kind of hard, and it also depends on what other value opens up and how you compare it with the potential value of Portland. You know what I mean? Because you're taking a lot of very thin-ish value plays, but the reality is somebody's going to get there in a big way. Maybe a couple guys. Um, but we'll have to see what other value opens up. And if it's too obvious, I would take the other value. Um, but as it stands, I, I kind of like taking shots on all these guys that don't really have a giant lean, except for maybe playing the young guys like Keon Johnson. That's pretty much all I got. Weird slate, man. This is a, this is a really weird slate. Well, and if you didn't like any of that, you get problem one problem, maybe the top scorer on the slate in the last game. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Um, I mean, that's the thing between Luca and Embiid. Those are two. I mean, they, these guys rate to be the best plays as far as raw points go by oh, a pretty healthy amount. You know, five, six points is a lot. Um, and uh, Embiid's pretty reasonable. Well, he's pretty reasonable on 
it's interesting on Fandle. Like he's eleven two, but you get um, Gobert's really cheap over there at seven six. So so seven eight uh, on DraftKings also. It's not that pretty much the same. Yeah, and no, I was just kind of looking to see like what the, yeah. where the ownership would go on um, on Fanduel. I, I think it'll be between those two guys, um, between uh, Gobert and him. But uh, yeah, be strong play, hard and strong play. Um, play one of them. Still don't have it in me to play them both together, but it's worked before. <laughs> yep. Um, maybe just in the last game, I'm not even sure. But uh, but yeah, I mean, raw points always matter. And uh, Embiid looks like a really, really good play. So I'm looking, I don't think you're going to be able to play both Embiid and Luca. Um, I mean, you might, but yeah, uh, Embiid certainly looks like a good play, and Harden looks like a good play. And I don't think I like anybody else in this game. Um, you like anybody except for those two guys? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Clippers have legitimately like nothing to play for. Basically, I mean, there's a six-game padding on either direction of them. They're going to be the eight seed. Um, no, no reason for them to play anybody or not play anybody, right? <laughs> you know, yep. it's just one of those situations where it's like, okay, well, yeah, maybe somebody gets there, but I, I mean, I guess that like my initial speculation is that Covington would probably sit. Um, it is his former team, like for what it's worth, but I, I, if he sits, that bumps up maybe Morris, Batum. Man, but not enough to where these guys are like ex- especially exciting. One of the Clippers will probably have an outlier game and, and get the 30 minutes, but everybody's currently projected under 32 minutes. And even Reggie Jackson, who's at 32 minutes, could easily play 28. Like we've seen this with the Clippers a lot, and you never really know what you're going to get with these rotations. And, and it's again, wonderfully coached team in real life, just not good for DFS. Um, one thing I would say though is that I don't I don't mind the idea of a long shot Hartenstein play. Um, the guy is just too good fantasy point per minute and we could easily see Zubach in foul trouble from the, from the jump, which could open up a monster game for Hartenstein. I mean, if he plays like 26, look at his last games. I mean, he plays 24 minutes. He puts up 31. He plays 25 minutes, puts up 38. Um, did have the kind of down game against Toronto, but his point per minute is just out of control. And that's the only thing I've got really, other than the, the, the main ones. And I prefer him beat over Harden. Um, for what it's worth, but I think they're both in play and, you know, a very small list of, of a player pool at this moment. Again, it's all going to change when I, I bet you we hear something about Washington. And uh, as of right now, though, I mean, I've got, I've got my priorities as Gobert, one of Mitchell or Connolly. The big question marks on the Miami, New York game and the Washington game. I don't know what to do with those ones. Uh, I do like Hayes a little bit for Detroit as of right now, but again, maybe better value to open up later. Beverly. I like, KPJ and uh, Christian Wood and Deshaun Tate, I like. Mostly I like that whole Portland-Houston uh, game, but it's hard for me to know who I want to play without knowing the starting lineup. So I'm probably going to be around till 10 Eastern to, to try and figure that out. Um, and then Embiid or Harden. It's, not, it's not, a, not a ton of players on my list today. How about you, Is that Anything different for you? No, I, I, like, a, I don't know, like Kevin Porter Jr. <laughs> I guess it's kind of, yeah. You know, I like, I like, uh, I like the Utah guys. Yep. I guess um, I guess you're probably supposed to do is probably I don't know. It's probably I would say probably toss Embiid and and Luca, you know, and and just play these play these mid range guys like I like I like to do. Um, mm-hmm. If no if no other value opens up, um, I don't know, but we'll we'll see. I mean, this is all all speculation. Yeah, my guess is Luca ends up pretty popular. I'm just going to point out again that Luca is basically like hardly ever getting there at the twelve one price since w- with Dinwiddie and Brunson both in the lineup um, for what it's worth. Like he's, he's not the 70 plus fantasy point Luca. We've, we've seen a couple of games like that, but it's been since the, you know, it was the beginning of March since they happened and you're getting a lot of very just middle-ish tier Luca and his usage is down a little bit, not as much as I, I would have thought, but uh, his productivity has been way down. And part of the reason why he's cheaper on Fandle, even though I like him obviously a lot over there, uh, is because he turns the ball over 700 times per game. And yet, you know, it's, it's just, it, if you're eliminating seven points per game, basically from your turnovers, that's why your points score is going to be lower. <laughs> your price is going to be lower over there. Same thing with Trey Young. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that, I think that Luca is a very strong play on, on FanDuel, I, I, even with the turnovers, but uh, the price on DraftKings is just like, yeah, he's probably going to end up really popular because everybody's going to, there's going to be value if there's value. If there's no value. He's going to be basically like 10% on in my guess is my guess. 
but uh yeah it's it's really hard this is one of those slates between new york and miami and washington i'm guessing that's where the slate gets decided because there's i know there's no q tags on the washington guys i'm just speculating but i'm going to guess on the back to back that something happens at morning shoot around and we'll probably hear it right as we load this video um yeah, all right Chiefs, anything else before we get out of here uh no good all right well good luck to everybody Sheets, you're not going to be around tonight right probably not Okay, well, well hopefully, if we get a lucky Sheets drop in, that would be nice because he's the one who won all the money. Sheets, pull it off again. Somebody else out there, we want to see screenshots, jump in the Discord. Let's make some money tonight, everybody.